Hi everybody, this is John Torres. Uh, I am a professor here at City University. I've been with the university since 1991, where I started as a student getting my bachelor's degree as a Boeing machinist. Uh, from there I went to the University of Washington for my Juris Doctorate and came back here to City U for my MBA in finance in 1997. Today I'll be talking to you about uh, instructing in a communist country. Although it sounds straightforward and you would just use common sense, uh, we're seeing some developments that have given us a moment to pause and, and wonder uh, if, if we uh, need to be a little bit more aware of ourselves and our surroundings. Specifically, and where's my, right here? I came across this article on the web, Vietnam's draconian cybersecurity bill comes into effect. And specifically, here's the link for it. Uh, now, my Giuliani um, uh, picture there is, uh, is for a little bit of fun, but it's also to key you in on, on sometimes we, we go to other countries and, and our expectations are that the individuals there uh, may think the same as we do when they may think entirely different. Uh, one of the events that I recently uh, uh, came across was students speaking very highly of uh, our current administration, uh, President Trump, and, and, uh, and all the great things he, he was doing. Uh, they really liked him. And it was uh, very interesting to hear their perspective. I wondered if their perspective was driven in part, this was in Vietnam, uh, because of their experiences, which is quite different than ours in terms of their government, how they come <coughs> make policy, and um, and how that policy is uh, communicated, and how it's implemented and deployed. Uh, the facts are not facts. Uh, reference is that I walked in thinking I knew certain facts about my own government, uh, and I came away realizing that I was only being inferential about certain elements of uh, my government, and I was certainly uh, juxtaposing many of my own beliefs onto my students. And it was interesting to hear their counter-belief was quite different than my own. The law in Vietnam has a, a couple of components to it that concern me. Uh, the law bans information that is toxic. Well, what does that mean? And I don't know. Uh, I've taught uh, and, and uh, litigated matters in uh, federal court uh, and, and uh, litigated matters uh, uh, implicating international clients from all over the world. And I've uh, dealt with uh, international contracts with uh, people from dozens of international uh, uh, companies. And so when I see a word that says it's toxic uh, without definitional uh, foundation, it's very concerning. The second part of the law bans internet users of Vietnam from spreading information deemed to be anti-state, anti-government, or use the internet to distort history, and this is a quote, post false information that could cause confusion and damage to socio-economic socio activity. My first reaction is, I don't know that I've ever been in a classroom that I didn't cause confusion. Well, what does all this mean? I think as, as um, educators, we have to take a look at history and be concerned about it, uh, about what it could mean to us. Oftentimes in, uh, in a nation that uh, is uh, totalitarian, uh, educators are the first ones to be flushed out and, and uh, oftentimes executed. Uh, we have educators here that have had past top uh, secret uh, security clearances, that have worked for the government, that have been high-level managers for the government. What does it mean to go into a communist country and cause confusion? Uh, and, and as vague as that is, the, the idea of damage to socioeconomic activities is uh, equally as concerning in the sense that uh, economics uh, is is a function of government, and socioeconomics is the idea of a policy uh, that is uh, permeated 
through uh, government uh, approved activities and, and, and government uh, subjugated activities. Uh, think of it, for example, like a sin tax on cigarettes. Uh, the government's trying to discourage an activity. I think here, though, we're talking about something a little bit more concerning in that uh, if we go and tell students about an open market or a free market uh, function, is that causing confusion? I would offer for communist students that have had no uh, real exposure to uh, a free market, it is going to be confusing. So how do we deal with that? When I brought it to City Youth's attention, they said that's, that's a, a very big concern. Somebody should do something. And then they volunteered me. So here I am. And I'm glad to do it. Uh, where do we start? Uh, well, we can, we can start with the uh, subject matters that City U has long uh, preached to us, uh, and for good reason. They recommend that we don't discuss the following three things when we're overseas, our income, our religion, and our politics. Let's talk about those. Income. Students are, are curious, and they're going to ask, you know, how much do you make? Or do you make a lot? And I've always found it better to turn that around because of relativity. Uh, in Vietnam, for example, the average uh, monthly wage is $157 a month. Uh, my billable uh, at, at my office is uh, $275 an hour. If I were to tell them that, uh, that would be maybe uh, interesting at least and, 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 and possibly uh, lead them to, to come to a conclusion that I was rich or, or somehow, you know, at a different tier when in reality it's just a relative idea. Um, and so I, I usually try to turn that around and talk to them about what their aspirations are and talk to them about what their goals are. Because really, that's what they want to know is how do I reach my goal? Religion. Uh, every foreign country I've ever been in uh, as a City U instructor, I've been asked about my religion. And not only am I asked about my religion, but I've been asked about other religions. Uh, and they're curious. So, uh, students are curious about it. Uh, I've always tried to talk about um, more uh, global ideas, such as fairness, respect, kindness. And the reason I like to talk about those ideas in particular is because those are endemic in how we operate as a university. We try to be fair. We try to be kind. We try to be open with our ideas and, uh, and, and respectful uh, to the students and, and to uh, uh, our system. So uh, I steered that direction. Politics. I have written here that politics are local. And I encourage students to participate locally. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that I believe in sustainability. And sustain sustainability, to me, is the idea where one person doing the right thing uh, can make a tremendous difference uh, for their own community. And so, uh, and, and because politics are local, a, a student uh, that decides to participate locally can make a, a much greater impact uh, because of the uh, quantitative uh, ideas of, uh, of, of local participation uh, as it spreads through uh, to broader ideas, and that turns into policy. And policy is a, is a uh, derivative of law and rules and regulations. Now, this uh, uh, slide is a, uh, uh, contains a quote I pulled out of a, uh, a, an article. It uh, wasn't too old, but maybe 20, 20, 30 years old. It says, let us turn now to the problem confronting a communist nation. And such a nation in the present world is not totally without price guides. It is parasitic on capitalism because it knows the price is being quoted for various commodities in a capitalist country. If somebody were to present that in uh, China or uh, Vietnam, I would, I would uh, guess that the uh, reaction would not be highly positive. 
even if it's from a technical perspective a truism or was a truism, it's using harsh language that is uh, designed to uh, uh, be upsetting in some ways uh, and, and to be uh, maybe diametric uh, in, in another. It says a communist bureaucracy is working in the dark. Same article. What I found interesting about it is though the time of the article being in the 80s, I believe, shows that nowadays we are not in the dark. People are operating uh, with the Internet, but the Internet is being controlled by, uh, by government. And so uh, we have to be cognizant that if we write something provocative in the United States as it relates to a communist nation, then we go to that communist nation and our writings are brought forth with us or identified to us uh, and these other elements have come into play such as uh, confusion or, or uh, 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 language that is uh, you know, insulting, uh, you might find yourself you know, in, in, uh, in a spot that uh, you'll have to explain away. So I encourage you to, whether it's Facebook uh, or LinkedIn, um, or even sometimes maybe your private writings, you know, be thoughtful of, of what you write and, and who you write about and, and how you portray them. I mean, we live in a very confrontational uh, world right now, and uh, in our government uh, has, has seen a lot of division. And going back to my first comment, stop and think that if, if you happen to be a, a liberal person, uh, that perhaps the country that you're in uh, may not be uh, as liberal as, as you are, and, and, and vice versa. There's the knowledge example, uh, Islamic investment versus cost of capital. My, my point here is, is that uh, uh, educating yourself with the, with on your audience is, is critical. Uh, there, we have a lot of uh, Muslim students, and they're very inquisitive, and they're very thoughtful, and they're very interactive. Uh, but they're not. But they're an example of the type of students we have. Having an international audience should require us to have a broad uh, thought process and to incorporate as much of the outside world as we can as we contemplate different ideas, different theories of economics social justice, uh, fairness, democracy, open trade, common law versus civil code law. Uh, I use this example because uh, this is a strict science, uh, the cost of capital. It's, it's the valuation of, uh, of how much it, does it cost for you to borrow money versus using le uh, stock versus issuing bonds, if you will. But the idea with the Islamic uh, reference is that it goes to the assumption of risk or allocation of risk. When you communicate those ideas, you're divorcing it away from as much of a, of a subjective viewpoint as to the merits of, of a relative a school of thought. And you're trying to couch your ideas in objective uh, terms and, uh, and communicate uh, from a highly objective perspective. The wisdom example, it, it, we're, we have our tools, and my recommendation is we use our syllabus, we use our text. These are approved items that have gone through our accreditation, uh, and, and they give us a guide, and they give us common starting points uh, for, for thought, uh, uh, thought learning and, and, and sharing. Uh, you follow the course schedule and, and discussion boards. I know that sounds all common sense. Uh, but what I'm suggesting is that by not straying too far from those ideas, uh, you can feel that, that, that what you're saying has already been vetted by the partner schools that you might be teaching overseas at. And then you walk with your students uh, by being inquisitive of them. Um, I taught with a lot of our instructors, and, uh, and very few of them use the Socratic method. Uh, most of them use this collaborative type of, of learning and, and inquisitiveness. And that is a great way to cross-pollinate ideas. Finally, create opportunities for wisdom and not just knowledge. Uh, knowledge can be derived from, you know, Wikipedia uh, uh, or the text, or, but it's not really wisdom, uh, and sometimes it's not even accurate. Uh, and so 
wisdom is an idea that you can take information and leverage it, uh, and, and where, whereas knowledge can just be a raw fact that is irrelevant in, in, uh, in certain contexts. Finally, uh, the Kuth example, uh, be kind but disciplined. Be true to your discipline. Uh, most students uh, highly value your credentials. Uh, and, and they respect our, our instructors a, a lot, and it's, and it's a great compliment to us. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. Um, and then assume you're being watched because you are being watched uh, in, in foreign governments. Uh, and, uh, and, and we review what we do around here uh, because uh, our quality of product has allowed us now to have that kind of feedback, and we all grow from it. Uh, as we uh, as we review how our performance was from quarter to quarter, so I'd like to end with that note and uh, and take any questions. All right, well, seeing none, I will turn it over to our uh, facilitator. All right, thank you, John. Thank you. Um, we've we've got a couple more minutes. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in chat, or if you um, have a microphone available, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask. Um, otherwise, you know, we'll, um, I'm going to mute the microphone for us here in the presenting room, but um, we're, we're still here. We'll still be here. Yeah. And if you, um, if you don't have any questions, um, you feel free to hop into the um, back into the schedule so you can see where you want your next adventure to be. John, I have a question. Yes, go for it, Sam. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you have a experience in teaching overseas, for example, Vietnam or China through the CDU program. Yes. So do you have a, some kind of a unexpected moment through the UI experience? then you have to use your wisdom to overcome that situation. If you have, if you can yes, share that with us, it will be great. Yes, I did. I was asked uh, about uh, my religion in, in a class uh, because I had mentioned to my students that before I had left, I had a, a dog that was very sick and, and uh, was uh, blind and, and could no longer stand and, and, was, and I had to take it to the vet uh, and, and that it was hard. And they started asking me about my religion because they wanted to know why that was hard. And they started talking about, you know, they asked me, what do you think of Muslims? What do you think of Buddhists and, 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 and such? And then afterwards, uh, this was all uh, senior executive people. One of the executive people was a, a party chairman um, mm -hmm. for the Communist Party. And he said, I'd like to take you out to dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. And as we went out to dinner, it was this little dive, but the food was awesome. But he said to me, he said, I have a friend who's a believer and I want to know what you think about my friend. And I had to think very quickly, and I came up with an antidote involving uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I went through uh, the story with him, uh, talking about how sometimes you think of weakness, but it's really power, and sometimes we think of passiveness, but yet it's, it's aggressive in, in thought. And when I got done, he looked at me, and, 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 and how I finished was I said, so I don't know if you're... I don't think the question is, is your friend a believer, but who does he want to share intellectual uh, fellowship with? Mm -hmm. And he said, I think you're right about my friend. But I will mm -hmm. be honest with you, when he first asked me, the very first thought I had was, I mm -hmm. wonder what the inside of a Chinese prison looks like. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, this, this is real. I, well, I was a Boeing tax manager. And uh, we were disputing a $640,000 tax bill, and the Chinese invited us to come over, and they said, if we rule against you, we will put you in prison until you pay it. You, you know, so, so, so these folks are, are, they're the real deal. Uh, you know, if they say it, you, you assume that they mean it, you know, and, and, and you proceed with, with that uh, idea. Okay. You know, I, I will also tell you that I've been to, uh, you know, Dubai and, and to South Africa and uh, uh -huh. Germany, uh, Brazil, uh, all over the world. And, and you oftentimes see things that are very different than what is reported as these nations uh, holding in high value. I, mm -hmm. I saw things in, in Dubai that were shocking to me 
as, as a as a person. I, I saw nudity there in, in, at, at a workplace that I, I just about fell out of my chair. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and the response was, well, that's that's the king stewardess. And I'm thinking to myself, the king would tell me about a certain piousness, and yet here I am in the workplace seeing somebody completely naked. Uh, it, it, it just shocked my conscience. So, you know, I, I did, there's always going to be something that you see that, that's going to leave you speechless. And if that happens, it's okay not to say anything. Just be speechless. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Does, does anyone else have a question for John? Um, you're welcome to type it in the chat, like we said, or uh, unmute your mic and you can ask out loud. We, we've got a couple of minutes, so don't be shy. <laughs> One last story. It's very short. We were asked to, I was asked to perform on stage with a local musician in Vietnam, and he told me that the song was a, a very traditional Vietnamese song, but it was all in Vietnamese, and, and I questioned him extensively about the song and to explain it to me, because I always worry about performing with somebody in a foreign language, only to find out that the message uh, might have been very anti-American or some other way offensive to a, a broader group of people, and there I am standing up there, you know, strumming my guitar. So, you know, again, you know, you be kind, you be inquisitive, uh, and, and uh, you know, be cautious. Uh, but I think, I think if you open yourself up and, and you're welcoming, uh, I think the good nature that, that I found in our partners all over the world is that uh, they, they want to make sure that you have a wonderful experience in these overseas assignments. And I strongly encourage anybody who hasn't done one to uh, talk to their senior faculty because there's some wonderful opportunities out there to uh, see the world.